Hey, my name is Theodore, I'm from Double Comma Dreams, and in this video, I'm gonna be revealing a case study that I did where I spent over $10,000 on a bunch of different backlink services, including Fiverr and some top-end link building agencies, and we're gonna go through and see if the links are actually good or not. This case study blew my mind, so I think you're gonna love it. Let's dig in. First off, let's go over the total spend. I spent over around $10,000, and you can see the breakdown here. $1,600 at Fiverr, a little around $2,000 at Authority Builders, $2,300 at Niche Website Builders, $1,100 at Fat Joe, $1,300 at Loganix for their products, and then $2,400 at Loganix for their Shop the List thing, which is actually really cool, and we'll get to that at the end of this video. Now before I move forward, I do want to say this entire video is not sponsored by any brand or agency. I've seen some other case studies where the one at the top of the list is like, oops, they paid me a thousand dollars. None of these agencies paid me. These are my real thoughts and not biased. These brands did not know that I was going to review these links. They did not know that any of these sites were associated with Double Comma Dreams. And I think that's important for you as a viewer to know. Now, one thing I do want to say is that most of these things that I bought were actually niche edits, where they go out and they find other websites that are doing well and ask to put a link on that website or that page, and as opposed to a guest post where you create a new page from scratch and put it on a website. So that was one thing I wanted to mention before I started this. Do you think I would get better results with a guest post as opposed to going the niche edit routes? Maybe that'll be my next case study. Another thing I do want to mention is that all of these links in this case study were to test domains and not to my main money sites. So you shouldn't be worried about me sending a whole bunch of fiber links to my main money website and it crashing. These are actually to test domains to see how they affect DR and traffic and stuff like that. They're not my main money website. Now before we get into the actual fiber gigs that I bought and how they performed and some of the brand agency purchases that I made and actually revealing what the domains are that I got links from, I want to go into some of the beliefs that were broken when I went through this process. The first belief <laughs> that snapped with me was that DR is a good metric. Now on Ahrefs you can log in and you can see a website's DR or domain rating. And in reality this is a really bad metric to base your backlinks on. DR is really not good and it's because it's very easy to manipulate. In fact, I was able to get a DR from like, I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was like 10 to 60 with one fiber gig and I'll show you with that in a minute. But one thing I do want to say is that DR is like the bottom of the barrel. It's really bad. It does not matter if you get a link from a DR90 website, if the post that it's on is getting no traffic and the post that it's on isn't even in Google. So if DR is at the bottom of the barrel, what's next up from that? Well, that would be a post that is actually has a higher specific UR, which is the URL rating. So this isn't the domain as a whole. This is the traffic or the rating for that one specific post. So DR, domain rating, is bottom. You don't really want to care about that when you're getting backlinks. UR is the next step up. This is the one that's a little more important because it tells you how important that specific page that you're getting a link from is, not the entire domain. And you'll see why that's really important in a second. The best metric right here you can see is actually the traffic. So if Google is already sending this page like 10,000 page views a month, it already knows. It goes, this is a great page. If it's getting 10,000 page views a month, it's a great page. Any links coming from it are going to be reputable. So you don't want to get a link from a high DR website. Even if it's DR90, it might not be a good link. You don't even want to get a link from a high UR website because those can be manipulated a little bit. You know what's hard to manipulate? Actual Google traffic. So if you get a link from a page that's receiving 20,000 page views a month and it shows that in Ahrefs, those are the types of pages that you want to get links from. Not the links that have high UR or high DR. You want to get links from pages that Google already likes and is proven through how much traffic those pages get. So this was a big belief that snapped with me. I thought DR was a good thing. You want to get links from high DR pages like Forbes and Wikipedia or any of these big name sites. Not really. You want to get links from other pages that have high traffic. That's what Those are great backlinks. Let's go on to my second belief that was broken. Um, I used to think that link building was really difficult. Um, and probably this is because a lot of my SEO time spent building websites was all about content. So I got really good at creating great content, adding images, making actual YouTube videos for the SEO of the page to actually be great content. And I never really focused on link building. And so that's why when I looked at link building, I went, that looks difficult. I've never done that before it's going to be difficult 
What really happened is when I started spending this $10,000 is I realized it's actually really easy if you spend money instead of spending your time. So I could have went the hard route and I could have done all this link building myself by actually doing outreach and other things like that. In this case, link building is actually really easy if you just have a bunch of capital to spend. So like I said, in this case, I bought a bunch of niche edits where you have a website that is already existing and already has a post and you say, hey, I want to link to my website right here where this word is. That's called a niche edit. Now, what I'm curious about I didn't test any guest post and I would be curious if guest posts would do better because the page is actually new and it has time to rank in Google as opposed to Google looking at it and be like hey they just slapped a link in there I'm also curious um, how help a reporter out works which is where you get uh, links kind of from higher DR websites but they're reputable and they have a brand they're just looking for experts to quote their sources and so I'm actually already testing Harrow I just put in an order like five thousand dollars to a Harrow agency um, and they do know that I'm doing this so they might be a little biased when I receive those results but I'll definitely share them on this channel I've also never really done anything with infographics before and I would love to test infographics because I've seen other people have great success with them and finally another link building tactic I would love to try is just doing interviews so I actually have a YouTube channel with over 2 million YouTube subscribers and because of that I have kind of this uh, brand presence where I can reach out to someone and say hey can I get on this podcast hey can I do an interview for your website and I've never really taken advantage of that to see if I can get backlinks um, I don't think it would be that hard for me to get some pretty good backlinks doing that kind of stuff. I've just never really been comfortable doing like interviews or just reaching out and asking for a backlink from someone. But this is a belief that was broken. I don't think it would be that hard to send one email or even 10 emails and get a couple emails back to get actually score backlinks. So this is something I'll be testing in the future. So let's move on. We're going to be going over the Fiverr gigs first. So the one thing about these Fiverr gigs, a lot of these gigs are like repeatable. So they have someone come in and buy them and then they just like use their software to send out a whole bunch of links. So due to that, most of these were very quick and I actually received like proof of the links within two weeks. Now, another thing I noticed is because these are affordable, some of them were under $10, um, they were common gigs and that means they usually gave out common links. So they weren't definitely not the best links. Another thing that I realized is that it's really easy to manipulate Ahrefs numbers. So you can manipulate the DR and you can even manipulate the UR, which we'll see on the next page. What's really hard to manipulate is actually the Ahrefs traffic number, which is their estimation on how many views that specific page actually gets from Google. And that's why traffic is the better metric. If I could buy a backlink and they said, we'll promise you the DR will be 90, I would not care about that. If they were like, we promise you the UR will be 80, I wouldn't really care about that. If they were like, we promise you that to this one page is 5,000 views a month, I would love to buy a backlink with 5,000 views a month because I know that there's actually going to be real people that eventually land on that page. They might click that link, go over to my website. And by the way, Google can track that. They have this web browser called Chrome. And I don't know if you know or not, but Chrome actually watches what you do. Even if you tell them not to, I guarantee they're probably listening to when you click on a link and go to another link. Google watches that and they use that as a metric. So let's move on. I'm rambling a little bit too much here. So here's all the gigs I bought. Uh, gig one, you can see when I bought the gig, what the UR of the post was. It was 23, and two months later after I bought it, it went up to 28. So that's kind of cool. I actually moved it from 23 to 28. You can see here gig two went from 22 to 6. So that means you probably shouldn't buy this gig because it literally dropped the UR. It made it less valuable. Somehow the Ahrefs bot thought it was like spammy or something. You can see here it also did that on gig three, 20 to 13. Uh, 19 to 20 is pretty good. 19 to 19 isn't the best because it stayed the same. 16 to 17, hey, it still went up. 14 to 15 still went up. 11 to 18, that's pretty good. You went up around 50%. Now, these last two gigs are the really interesting ones. They This one went from 10 to 32, which tripled. This one also went from 10 to 35. And so, and so technically, this last one, when I realized the UR went up so much on both of these, 9 and 10, I was like, what happens if I just do both of these gigs together, uh, because they're different gigs, and see what it does? And in two months, the gig on this post went from 2 to 41 by buying these two gigs. And by the way, these gigs were like, it was under 50 bucks total. So you're going to be surprised at what these Fiverr gigs were. Now, now let's actually get into what these gigs actually were. That's right. I'm going to be sharing with you the exact gigs that I bought. So you'll have to like skip around in the video if you want to see like what gig number seven was, what it did. You'll have to skip back. So let's go ahead. Gig one was $33. It was 100 guest posts on PBN. You can see here $30. It went up to $33 because Fiverr charged me tax or whatever. Um, and this is that gig. Gig two was actually 10 top authority SEO do follow guest posts. 
Um, you could, I could have actually checked these. I didn't. Um, I'm assuming the guest posts were actually like spun content or copied and pasted stuff, maybe even plagiarized. It might even be AI, but I mean, it's 20 bucks. So what are you going to get for $2 an article? Gig three. I actually saw this one and I was like, that's actually cool. A DR88 blog link. Um, and this is one of the gigs that kind of like broke my belief about DR being important. So I paid $25 for this link, technically 28 and it didn't really help that much. Actually, I was gig three, the one that went down. Yeah, gig three actually went down. So that's not actually a good gig to buy. Uh, especially for $28. Gig 4 was $12, and it was 200 EDU links. Um, and I like $12 for 200 links, you might think that's a great deal. Well, you get what you pay for. Now, I was looking through here, and I was curious on what this was, citation-based. So with this one, you actually have to give them like your address and your phone number and stuff, and then they just like import you into a whole bunch of directories and like other like Yelp and Yellow Pages and stuff like that. So that's what this gig was. It was $5. I was like, might as well test it out. Uh, gig six was actually an EDU post on like the Berkeley website. And I was like, that's super cool. If this works, I'd love to like do this for some of my actual websites. And so I bought it. It was like 50 bucks. You can see here it went from 16 to 17. So it didn't really help. Another thing was you actually have to provide the w article that you want them to put on the Berkeley website. And I didn't have one. So I just asked them to write one and it was another 50 bucks. So this real gig was actually like $100. Gig seven was 60 PR9 links, which is paid drank nine gig eight was five manual blog comments and what did gig eight end up doing gig eight actually went from so five comments went from 11 to 18 and so that's actually not that bad of a gig for ten dollars now let's get into the ones that shine gig nine and gig ten so gig nine was what was called a two-tier campaign and so you can see what they've done here is you have a link to your main site and then you they have blog posts and forum profiles that go to your main site and then they do blog comments to those blog posts and forum profiles to then hype up these links, which then hype up your money site link. And I initially bought the $30 one. For the test that I did on the other one where um, I did number nine and 10 together, I technically bought the premium on the second one just to see how much I could boost that UR up. But essentially these are a bunch of like fake profile links and you can see what they did to the DR. They went from 10 to 32. That means UR does not really matter. If a bunch of profile links can like hype that up, that means you can manipulate it pretty easy. Let's go to gig 10, which was 150 high DA comments. Now, I don't know what they mean by high DA. They didn't actually say what high domain authority, no idea what that means, but I ordered 150 of them and it took my UR from 10 to 35, which is a pretty decent increase. And again, I saw nine and 10 and I saw how much they jumped and I was like, I wonder if I could buy both of these together and what they would do. So that's literally what I did for this last one. I just bought them together on a new post and it went from two to 41. So that was like, th that was another thing when it like clicked to me, like UR does not really matter. It's super manipulatable. And so I shouldn't really care about it too much. Now, let's get into the brand agency links that I bought. And I'm actually putting myself out here on a limb by doing this uh, because <laughs> a lot of these links were not good. And so I'm going to be telling other people, do not buy these. And so some of these link companies, I actually know like personally on Twitter, they're not gonna like what I have to say about them. But I think the truth should be revealed and you should see what you're buying before you actually get them. So the first off, oh, I actually forgot I bought gig 11. So gig 11 was literally this, uh, what it basically promised to increase your DR to 50. It was 260 bucks. So this one said DR 60 plus. Uh, I clicked the premium one over here um, and I clicked it and it went from, you can see here, it was like 12 to 64. Look how manipulatable DR is. I paid 260 bucks and got DR to 64. So when they say, when a link building company says, we'll get you a DR 60 plus link, they're just buying a website, put slapping this gig on it, and then that, now they can advertise a $500 link. That upsets me a little bit, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the first, I guess I'm gonna grill into authority builders here. So I got a link from this website. Again, this is a niche edit where they say that they either use their um, connections or they actually own this website and then just put a link on it. But either way, this is the first one was called themotherhuddle.com and you can kind of see the Ahrefs overview here. I put it on here just to be completely honest and show you what I got a link from. Um, I did some digging and I realized they have 706 posts in their sitemap. So these posts, these posts aren't the best posts, uh, but what really intrigued me is there's only 136 that show up on Ahrefs, which means out of the 700 posts they have on their website, a little over 100 actually show up on Google. So I don't know what they're doing with those other like 600 posts that's making them not show up on Google, but there's probably a reason Google's like, this site looks a little weird. Anyways, you can see their traffic. It's like all over the place, up, down, up, down. 
Um, and they're actually not receiving that much traffic, like 3,000 page views a month, at least based on Ahrefs data, doesn't look like the best website to me. So you can actually take a look at their domains and DR over time. So you can see they've been growing their domains at least around 2016, haven't really done much since. And you can see their DR since 2016 has just slowly been going down. And the reason it's probably going down is probably because they're just popping on links onto this website and not actually building content. You can see down here, they've got a ton of low quality backlinks and no backlinks from DR websites above 50. So that means this website is probably not a really good website to get a backlink from. Let's go on. Another website that I got a link from them was Mummy Matters. So the website's actually deep in mummymatters.com. Again, I don't know why I'm getting so many links from mom blogs. The post, the websites that I gave them had nothing to do with mom blogs. So you'll see a weird thing among this that the, a lot of these links are actually from mom blogs, uh, which is weird. Like the mother huddle, uh, deep in mummy matters. It, it's weird that it's a mom. I'm getting a bunch of links from mom blogs. Don't know why. They have 8,000 posts. My own website that I've been working on for like five years has like 600 posts. So this blows my mind. All, by the way, these are not programmatic like posts. I clicked into each one of them. Each post has like three links on it. So this is like clearly not a good website to be getting links from. Out of their 8,000 posts, only 1,600 of them are actually like on Google. So I don't, there's like 6,000, 7,000 posts out there that are like on the website, but Google's like, we're not showing these which is really interesting. You can also see here the traffic, how it like actually spikes up. They're actually getting decent traffic, almost 10,000 page views a month, except around January, they must've got hit by an update or something and it really started going down. Um, and another thing I noticed is if you take a look at some of these other links that I got, their traffic actually, their traffic and like new backlinks look really similar. We'll get to that in a minute. But before we do this deep in mummymatters.com, I snooped around on Ahrefs and I was like, I wonder how many pages they're actually linking to. So you know how I said on each post I clicked into, there was like multiple links. Well, you can actually look how many links they're linking to in Ahrefs. They're linking to almost 8,000, 9,000 different domains. That's nuts to me. That means every page they link to a different post, which basically means this isn't a real website. This is a website that's been set up to link to other websites to earn money. So authority builders, I wish that you would have vet this website a little bit more. It does not look like an actually good website to get a link from, especially one that I paid a decent amount of money. I think it was like over 200 bucks that I spent for this link. Anyways, enough grilling into them. Let's get into niche website builders where I purchased three different niche edits. Um, this first one is gardenandgreenhouse.net. So you can actually see there are 1500 total posts. There's 1100 in age reps, which is a little bit better matching. However, with a DR of 35, they're only getting 5,000 page views a month and their traffic rank is actually going down throughout time. Uh, that's usually not a good sign. The next website I got a link from was trianglegardener.com, which is really interesting because it also has a thousand articles and most of them are actually ranking on Google. The weird thing is they had a bunch of like images or something that were ranking. Now, if you take a look at this, you'll notice something that I thought was a little odd between both of these gardening websites. Let me switch back and forth really quick and see if you can see what I'm meaning. Why do their referring domains look almost exactly the same? Look at this. They look exactly the same. That's a little suspicious to me. I'm not going to say anything else about that. We'll move on to Fat Joe. Now, I like Fat Joe. Fat Joe's on Twitter. He provides a lot of value on Twitter. Some of the links I got from Fat Joe, a little concerning. This specific website, Life is Mama, again, not sure why there's so many like mom blogs that I'm getting links from, uh, but this one has 4,000 posts. Again, maybe they have real posts. If you have 4,000 posts, hopefully you're getting a little more than 10,000 page views a month. So a lot of these posts are probably either spam or put on there just to sell links. Um, you can see about half of them are actually in Ahrefs. And if half of them, 2,000 posts are generating 10,000 page views a month, that is a little suspicious. They may not be the best keywords. Again, let me go back to the other two from niche website builders. Take a look at their referring domains. What on earth is going here? They all look the same. What are these websites doing? Another thing I want to say really quick is that this website, Life is Mama, actually has a DR of 59, which is amazing. But the fact that it's a DR of 59 website with organic traffic of only 10,000 page views a month looks a little bit like they bought a website, applied the fiber gig to it to make it have a huge DR, and then sold it as a expensive backlink. When in reality, I mean, we know what this website is. Let's go to the next one, sunnysweetdays.com. This one also has 1800 posts with 10,000 traffic. Now, there was some weird there was a weird thing I noticed here. If we look at both of these, uh 10,000.2 traffic, 10,000.2 traffic. A little weird to me. Another weird thing is take a look at this Ahrefs uh rank. So, this first one, it like goes and it bumps up a little bit and then goes on. This next one goes 
bumps up at a later date. So it's like they tried something and they were like, shoot, that works, do it on our other domains. And next thing you know, this one has it too. Another thing is, look at the referring domains, referring domains, almost the exact graph. The same with niche website builders. This is starting to get a little weird. It's like they are all working together or something. Anyways, that kind of ends my reviews of like the brand building stuff. Actually, I got one more, Loganics. So Loganics, I actually purchased a press release from them. Um, and I'm gonna say that this was worth it because some of the links that they actually said that they got for me um, actually showed up on Google like in that, a couple days later when I Googled my brand name. Um, and so I thought that was super cool. But one thing I will say is that this creates a lot of links with your address, your business address and your phone number. Uh, so that Google can start seeing you as a real business and not just a niche website. Uh, so for me, this $300 press release uh, was worth it. Another thing I'll mention is that I think this press release was actually really similar to this citation thing that I bought. Um, and it was much, it was $5 compared to $300. So you may want to look into that a little bit if you're thinking about doing some form of a press release. Uh, the next thing is Loganix has this thing called the shop the list thing. Um, one thing I'll mention about this, I think Fat Joe, one of the other agencies also has this, where you have a website and you're like, I want to earn money other than just display ads or affiliate marketing. I'll put some links on my website and make some money. Well, you can submit your website to these things like Loganics, and then you'll show up on their list. So what I could do as a backlink buyer is I could be like, I want a backlink from, which one of these? Androidpolice.com. I could click it, add it to my cart, and if you look over here, in seven weeks, if I spend four grand, that wow, that's an expensive backlink. I'll actually get a backlink from AndroidPolice.com. So some of these are like super expensive, six grand, five grand, uh, two grand. Some of these are not as expensive. Like this one's one hundred seventy-five dollars here, uh, but the, actually the oh, it's no follow. All right. Um, I thought this was really neat. I've actually purchased a couple domains from this, but I'll say two things. One, when I purchase the domains, I haven't received them yet, actually. Um, and number two, if anyone can buy links from these websites, do you think that maybe Google has a rolling list of all of these websites that are selling their links, especially if it's more on just Loganics? Like, I think I was on Fat Joe. I may be speaking wrong, but I think Fat Joe also had something like this. Anyways, I thought it was super cool that you could just like see a list of like websites that are straight up just selling links. Um, and the prices that they're selling them for. Like, I'm sure that Loganix gets a premium on this, like 10% or 50% or something like that. Uh, but some of these backlinks, these are actually pretty expensive. Um, I also got two authority links from Loganix, which is different than a niche edit. But one of the links I got from them was the braggingmommy.com, which again, why, why? <laughs> that has nothing to do with my niche. And then I went into like their top posts and I wanted to see what some of their, like how many pages were actually ranking in Google. And you can see here, 3,500 pages are actually ranking in Google. So I didn't even look at how many like different posts they actually have, but I looked at the top one. This is a mom blog and their top post is best fake IDs. You do not want a link from this. I paid two, I paid $500 for this link. Bad link. I wish I could get my money back. Not a good link. Overall, what I will say, Fiverr, yes, some money was well spent. I learned how to increase my UR from, I think it was like two to 40. And I learned how to increase my DR from 12 to, I think it was like over 60. Um, and so it's really good to know that that stuff can be manipulated at a very affordable price. So this was money well spent. Authority builders, I spent two grand with them. I was not happy with the links that I received. Niche website builders, I spent $2,300 with them. Again, not happy with the links that I received. Same with Fat Joe, same with Loganix. Am I upset that I spent 10 grand and did not really get the best links? No, I learned something. I learned that I probably shouldn't be going with these link building agencies. Like I said earlier in the video, I wanna test some of these other things out. If I had spent 10 grand on infographics, and I created like 50 infographics that were $200 each. Do you think I would have gotten a lot better links in the span of like two months? Probably. What about if I spent 10 grand on Hero resources, which I technically have just spent like five grand with an agency. So we'll see how that turns out. And what if I spent 10 grand uh, building up my like own personal brand to get interviews, to get links within those interviews? Honestly, I don't think these link building agencies are providing the best value. I think there's a lot of big companies that are out there that are like, we have 50 grand to spend this month on link building. Where should we spend it? Let's go to this agency and give them 50 grand. That would probably be my expectation of where some of these uh, link building agencies are uh, getting a ton of money. But for me personally, if you have less than a $10,000 budget, <laughs> I would not be buying links from these places. For me, it was money well spent because even if one of these ended up like doubling my traffic, $10,000 would have definitely been worth it. 
but at least now I know it's not worth it. There were some fiber gigs in there that were pretty interesting, and the Loganix press release I kinda liked, along with the Loganix shop your list thing, but overall, a little disappointed with the expensive links that I bought. As we end this video, I wanna thank you for watching. I actually initially created this video because I wanted an up-to-date case study of a bunch of reviews of the different places to buy backlinks from, and I did some searches and I couldn't find any. There weren't any, so I made one. So if you found this useful, if you liked this video, if you learned anything from it, you should click the like button and subscribe because I plan to keep creating more content like this where I just share what I'm learning and what I'm doing in the SEO space. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video.